to form a culture, it takes about like two, three thousand years. Uh, so we Tibetans have our own culture and tradition. It's a very unique, and overall, uh, especially like our religion is very peace and compassion and loving, uh, uh, and especially with the His Holiness teaching, as uh, everybody should feel the oneness. We are all one. And something like this to eradicate uh, out of this world, it's a very sad. That's why we uh, Tibetans, anywhere in the world, we try hard to preserve that and uh, we try to learn the teaching of His Holiness. Today's Western world, including Canada, I usually call modern education. Modern education, very much oriented about material value. That's not sufficient. Now we should also pay more attention about education, how to bring inner peace, and how to tackle anger, jealousy, these things. Uh, not through drug, but through thinking, utilize human intelligence. Through that, that we, we call meditation. Mm -hmm. Thinking more about anger, jealousy. All these real destroyer of inner peace are based on ignorance, not wisdom. And you see, they, these destructive emotion very much based on appearances. The reality is something different. The school has two major parts, and which is the language, and then in the morning and in the afternoon, there's uh, song and dance, like performing arts, song, dance, and opera, and learning instrument. And in the morning, we have uh, uh, a very important program where students actually pray together and then do meditation, and which actually is aimed to help them, you know, train their emotion and mind, which is a really important part in Tibetan culture. Buddhism spread from India to Tibet, uh, and for about, I would say, 500 years, uh, you know, Tibet has been practicing Buddhism, and it actually emerged in our culture, and right now we call it a Buddhist culture. So Tibetan culture is a Buddhist culture, and when we say Buddhist culture, Buddhists uh, usually, we all look for happiness, we all wanted happiness. Buddhism and, and Buddhist culture, what we believe is training our emotion and training on our mind actually is the source of happiness. And then also, how do we train that? And then you actually look outside and then help others and then working with others with kind heart 
and then helping others with altruistic mind. Uh, so that's the culture. I, as a principal, wanted to actually pass on that, which is really important to the students, and that's why we're doing the prayer. Right now they do pray, they read Tibetan script and then pray. Content in the prayers is all about uh, loving kindness, practicing, like understanding the true reality, like all are impermanent and interdependent on each other, everything, even like material and then, and then also non-material like human. And that's what I, you know, wanted to be, wanted to pass on to the to this new generation and so that they they also can use those tools to lead a good life. I've become a monk for almost uh, 13 years. I've been a monk, and especially I was a monk in the uh, monastery of the Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, which is called Namgyal Monastery. Traditionally, like some parts of the world, uh, sending their son to the army, or in our com community, sending your son to the monastery, is uh, the greatest achievement. But choice is always for the kids. For example, I became a monk after finishing my school. And I did it monk with my own choice. Because monk life is very tough. First few years, you got so many of trainings, especially memorizing and learning philosophies. If you learn philosophies and memorize all the texts, when you do meditation, it's much more easier. There are two types of meditations. One is called single-pointed meditations, which most of the people in the outside world do that. You're not thinking in other things. You're just point, meditating or visualizing one thing or emptiness, it's completely empty. Or you, easiest way to meditate for you, for the, anyone who has not knowledge about meditation. Who is your best person that you love? You visualize. If you can sit cross-legged like a lotus position, that's good. If not, sit like a chair. Back straight, head a little bit tilted in the front. 
so that you won't fall asleep and then meditate. Close your eyes is better because there's no distractions. Then think about Once you become that meditating on visualization, single pointedness becomes better, 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 better. Then you read books about anything. In our culture, it's Buddhism and their different ideas, different teachings. Then not only single pointed, you analyze. You analyze. Analyze. In my culture, we say, Enemy is not outside, enemy inside. If you can control your enemy inside, outside enemy, you can easily subdue. If somebody is angry, if you know how to meditate and analyze and tame the negativity of anger, when somebody is angry, you can understand, oh, I feel compassion. Your compassion will come automatically. That's what we call meditation. Doesn't have to be Buddhist, doesn't have to be Christian, anyone. Whole world is too much of materialistic. How you can bring all the materialistic back into one? Happiness you cannot buy from big shop or like that, supermarket. Or we cannot ask factory to produce happiness or new brain from factory. Impossible. <laughs> so therefore, utilize this brain and basic human nature, that's a human compassion. Now scientists say, since we are social animal, Basic human nature is more compassionate. It is true. Oh, so therefore, the basic human nature, more warm-heartedness, and combined with human intelligence, human brain, then we can increase this uh, basic human nature, good quality, good emotion. Uh, that is the ultimate source of happiness. But it was this young person. <laughs> My question is, uh, how to quickly attend enlightenment? I think uh, <coughs> the Buddhahood, ultimately Buddhahood, Right. Uh, that means enlightened person. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, get fully enlightened, all the negative which obstacles to that should remove. Not through prayer, but through meditation. You see, no matter what you are sounding, hostile sounding, but you can keep peace of mind. our country. Tibet was one a free country. Now we are no longer free and therefore um, to in order to restore our culture, if you don't have a community, it's very difficult. For us, for all the Tibetans, uh, we need uh a place where we can gather, 
where we can preserve our language and culture because apart from any other um, nationalities, we Tibetans have a special sort of a responsibility because uh, Tibet is under China and uh, 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 the Tibetans outside Tibet is very limited. So each and every Tibetan outside Tibet is so important and they are the voice of the voiceless. So eventually our hope and wishes is these youth will take over from us and continue the struggles of Tibet. Demonstration is not that important. What is important is educating our young, younger generations. Where they come from, who they are. My, my dad used to say, in my forehead, there's an invisible name called Tibetans on my forehead. Don't forget where you come from. So day to day, we educate, teach them. That's more important. How many demonstrations we have done? I've never thought before that Tibetan people, they preserve the, their culture and languages, everything, right? But they proved me wrong. They're making such a beautiful, beautiful, you know, this, um, it's a monastery or the Chogang, we call Chogang. So this is something, you know, very amazing for me. I'm so shocked, you know, once I reach here, you know, I was so shocked by seeing this all. So th this is very appreciable. And I'm, I am really proud to be myself that I can, I am at, at least supporting the Tibetan people. My name is Subtan Sring. I came all the way from India. So there is one small place, state called Arunachal Pradesh. Well, I'm very fortunate to be the part of a Tibetan Association in Toronto. And uh, mostly, I really appreciate the Tibetan community and the Tibetan people. You are very from, far from your country, but you are still, you know, your heart is always, you know, with, uh, close with your country, own country. So sometimes these people, you know, they realize that uh, what they have lost in, in their life, right? Like um, Tibet is still not free yet, right? So like um, when I sing this kind of songs, right, you know, they, they cry. <laughs>
My commitment to Gajak Tibet is firstly preserve Tibetan cultural heritage, including Tibetan language. Uh, this is my uh, commitment to Gajak Tibet. sense of oneness of human being. I'm one of the seven billion human beings. So now today, uh, the whole seven billion human beings are actually one human community. So we have more responsibility to create happier humanity. In Tibet, we have uh, three different provinces, Amdo, Yuzan, and Kham. And uh, based on the songs and dances coming from these three provinces, uh, our students dress up in, with the respect to that. Costumes uh, came from their own motherland, like Kongbo, they have a special one, and uh, Kirong, they have their own separate way of costumes. Uh, we call it costumes, but basically they are not costumes. They are day to day life, what they wear in their own hometown. So therefore, but here we make them as a costume because uh, they hardly wear during day to day life, you know.
How we can sustain our culture, how we can restore our culture towards the kids so that our culture will be given to us to the younger generation so that they can to become a good, compassionate and good-hearted person. Even though we teach them our physical dances and the uh, language classes, but the main point is how kids they will brought up become a good person. I believe teaching them a humble person the true nature of Tibetan. In our culture, we say, if you cannot help others, don't hurt them. That is our principle. Even if there's an ant walking around over there in your home, yeah, you just pick it up with your napkin, throw it in a safe place. Because we got to respect each and everything. We got one planet to be together. Only one planet. If we don't teach them how to safeguard this planet, not from outside, first from your family. First bring your peace and humble and compassionate within your family, within your friends, then it will grow up. That's how we teach them to the students. I feel Tibetan, small Tibetan community, you see, can m make some contribution regarding uh, knowledge about mind and how to lead life more peaceful, more compassionate. But meantime, the influence of Western lifestyle, uh, more sense of competition <laughs> and more desire making more money, money, only think money, 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 money. <laughs> Some Tibetan also, you see, now become like that. <laughs> but I think these people getting older, then they realize, oh, Tibetan tradition uh, in for us uh, the peace of mind, very useful, our tradition. So those small Tibetan community there, I think, you see, some kind of mutual benefit. Canada's, Canada, sort of economy, a good economy, help them, and Tibetan inner peace can share more with Canadian brothers, sisters. July 6 is the birthday of the His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. And all over the world will be celebrating uh, his birthday. And uh, I hope and wish that His Holiness the Dalai Lama will come over here and do the opening ceremony of our community, especially when we uh, recently did the um, renovation for our temple, which should be uh, completely done and do the opening on the July 6. So therefore, Toronto, we may have roughly, I guess, six to seven thousand people. So it'll be a great, and all the world will be um, 
uh, enjoying and celebrating and praying for his long life. We go through rough toughness, but that day we forget all the rough and uh, difficult things we enjoy, you know, like New Year's.